Welcome to the celebration of Holy Mass here at St. Luke Catholic Church. Today is the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. If you wish to support our parish financially, please go to www.stlukechurchssj.org slash donate. You can also mail a donation to the church or in-person drop-off. Thank you for your continued support of our parish. May God reward you abundantly. Our celebrant today is Father Cornelius. He will be assisted by Deacon Walker. Let us now quiet ourselves as we welcome the Lord who is in our midst today. Interest at the fun? Turn your ear, O oh Lord, and answer me. S save the servant who trusts in you, my God. Have mercy on me, O oh Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. If you would stand with us as we sing our entrance song, Jesus in the Morning. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Yeah. And good morning to you, my sisters and brothers. Welcome to this Mass of the 21st Sunday in all. Our Lord Jesus Christ today ask each and every one of us. Who do you think that I am? Our knowledge of God determines how we use the power that we have. We come today to ask God to give us the grace, to give us the strength, to give us the courage to be able to use the keys, the power, the authority we have to lift others up to bring goodness to their lives. For so indeed, God himself desires us to do. And so my brothers and sisters gathered around the table of the Lord's sacrifice and to prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery. Let us pause for a moment. Acknowledge our sinfulness. Many times we have not used our power correctly. Let us ask God to be merciful on us and to grant us peace. Mm -hmm. 
Lord, you were sent to heal the contrite heart. He Christ, you who came to call our sinful heart, please tell his song. Please tell his song. Lord, you will plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Kiri Ehele Isong. Kiri Ehele Isong. Kiri Ehele God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainty of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 22, verses 19 through 23. Ju Thus says the Lord Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant, Elakim, son of Hilkai. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give him over to him your authority. He shall be a father of the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David of Elakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one will open. I will fix him like a peg in a square spot to be a place of honor for his family the word of the Lord. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your... Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I will give thanks to your name because of your kindness and your truth when i called you answered me you built up strength 
within me. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. The Lord is exalted yet. The lowly he sees and the proud he knows from afar. Your kindness, O oh Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your Lord. Your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Your hand. A reading from the letter of Saint Paul to the right to the Romans. Chapter 11, verse 33 through 36. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom of knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor, or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid. For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. church and the gates of the netherworld should not prevail against it. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, Still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? 
Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. May the name of the Lord be blessed both now and forever. Amen. God is good all the time. Uh, I do want to use this mass, uh, this opportunity that I have to welcome uh, the newest couple in town. Amen. Uh, Parfait and Prisca, if you can stand so that they can see you, you know, as we congratulate you on your on a wonderful on, on your wedding yesterday. Now I saw I saw Prisca with her long gown, white gown, right? Yeah. And I knew she wasn't playing, amen. Even though they have been doing this thing for over 30 years. She still wore her white long gown yesterday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she tells us she's not playing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when you get there. As long as you get there. Amen. <laughs> so God is good to you. And we thank God for your children. Thank God for your family and all your friends and relatives who were here to support you yesterday. Even though you had a COVID wedding, you had to wear a mask, but we still had a blessed field time. And so to you who just been wedded in the church, God is reminding you that you must use this gift that you have, this authority, this power that you, you have been given this solemnization of your wedding, this convalidation of your wedding, you must use this as an opportunity to serve God. To all of us, the same message is given to us. We all have power. We all have authority. Amen? Amen. And because we have power and authority, we must use it right. We must use it the keys that have been given to us, we must use it to bring goodness to others. Using your key to unlock the goodness that others indeed will need. In the first reading that we heard from the prophecy of Isaiah today, chapter 22. Now, if you jump through this scripture today, you may not understand the whole story. So let me do you a favor and going back a little bit. Because in this 22nd chapter, we see where Isaiah says, Thus says the Lord, to who? To Shebna. Shebna is master of the palace. And God is saying to Shebna, I will thrust you from your office and I will pull you down from your station. Huh? So what did Shebna do? What did he do? to warrant this harsh word from the prophet and from God. Shebna did not use his power in the right way. He did not use the keys that he had. You know, all of you, everybody here has a key, right? 
Mm-hmm. You all have a key. If you, if you don't have a key, then you won't be able to get into the house. You won't be able to get to the car. So keys are assigned to authority. And I will come back and explain a little bit more. But Shebna did not use the power, the key that he had, that was given to him. He did not use it right. Shebna was the chief of staff to King Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a wonderful king for the people. They loved him. But because Shebna was his chief of staff, Shebna was using the power he had to build monuments for himself. As a matter of fact, Shebna went up onto the Mount of Olives, the sacred mountain of the Lord, and Shebna built himself a tomb, a place where after he died they would bury him. And he put it so high on the mountain so that everybody will come to see where he, he laid to rest. He adorned it with gold and ornament. It was so beautiful. But he built it for himself. So rather than use the resources of the kingdom for the good of the people, Shebna used the resources of the people for himself. Selfishness. Self-aggrandizement. Shebna reminds me of one of the leaders that we had who is no longer with us today, Saddam Hussein. And you see how gigantic a statue he built for himself. See how he channeled the resources of his country and built things and monuments for himself while his people were suffering. That's exactly what Shebna did. Just to remind us that Shebna did this 700 years before Jesus. 700 years before the coming of Christ. During the reign of uh, a King Hezekiah. And so because he did this, that's when we can read the 22nd chapter today. God became upset with Shebna. God became angry with Shebna. That in the previous uh, verses, God will say to Shebna, who are you? Who do you think you are? Who gave you the power and authority to build monuments for yourself and use the resources for yourself? Mm -hmm. Let her be. She's my... Okay. You, you, do your, you do you, and I, let me do me over here. Okay. So, so God was so upset with, uh, with uh, Shebna this morning, and now let us read exactly what, through the mouth of the prophet, God wanted Shebna to know. He says, I will thrust you from your office. Why? Because you were building monuments on for yourself, and you were building tombstones for yourself, and I will pull you down from your station. When this happened, on that day that this will happen, I will summon who? My servant, Eliakim. Eliakim, who is the son of Hilkiah. And when I summon my servant, Eliakim, I will now clothe him with your robe. Amen? Did you catch that? God says, I will clothe this new person, this servant of mine. I will take your robe from you. Who? Shebna. I will remove the clothes. You know what it means to undress somebody and take their clothes from them. What does that symbolize to you? A loss of dignity. If you're walking in the street and somebody just come to you and then they, they snatch all your clothes away from you, what, what, you feel naked and you feel vulnerable. You feel violated. But that's what God says he was going to do to Shebna. He says, you Shebna, I will clothe this servant with your own robe. And not only clothe him with your robe, I will now gird him with your sash. You know what a sash is, right? A sign of strength, right? A sign of purity. So I will take that which you have, your sash, I will take him and I will put him around Eliakim's waist. That's, that's not it. God continued to say to, to Shebna, and I will give him over your authority. 
So whatever power you think you have, if you don't use it, if you don't use the keys, remember I told you that keys are a sign of authority. Keys are a sign of power. If you don't use the keys that God has given you, this could happen to us. That's the message for all of us this morning. We have to use the keys that we have to unlock the goodness in others. Not for ourselves, our selfish self. Said, I will clothe him with your robe. I will gird him with your sash. So whatever power we think we have amassed by ourselves, if we don't use it well, God will take it away from us and he will give it to someone else. If that's not scary, I wonder what will. If that doesn't scare us, I wonder what will. And, 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 and don't say, oh, I'm, I'm not in political office. I, I don't have power. I don't have a... No, you do. All of us, every one of us, each and every one of us is imbued with power and authority. Whether you are a parent, you have power over children and the people around you. Whether you are a worker, you have authority. It doesn't matter where you work. Even at grocery stores. Haven't you been to the grocery store and then you, you say something smack and then the person ringing you up makes you spend an extra hour trying to ring you up, right? Yeah? Mm -hmm. That's power. Even those who work in the grocery store, they can use their power to actually deal with you. So nobody here, none of us, None of us is eluded with the power and authority. But the key for all of us today as we hear is that we must use whatever keys, whatever authority that we have been given, we must use it simply for the good of others. Now, this is what God says he's going to do to Shebna. Now, this is the blessing that he says he's going to give to Eliakim. He says, I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. In other words, I'll give him power. I'll give him authority. He has so much power that when he opens, no one shall shut. Amen? And when he shuts, no one shall open. That's the power, that's the authority that Eliakim will have, a servant. And why will Eliakim have this power? Because he surrendered himself to the Lord. He humbled himself to the Lord. In other words, for us to have power and authority, we must have three things, three ingredients is needed. Number one, we must be a man or woman of integrity. We must be men and women of honesty. And we must be fair. Fairness had to be a part of our life. Let me repeat that. We must clothe ourselves with integrity. We must put on and guard ourselves with honesty. And we must wear over us fairness. Fairness in our do. These three ingredients, integrity, honesty, and fairness, must be present in every Christian. That's why Jesus in the gospel today, he looked at his disciples, and they have been with him for about three years. And he understood that there was something missing in his disciples. Remember a few weeks ago, we read about the mother of the sons of Zebedee. Who brought two of her sons to Jesus? What was she asking for? Let one of my sons be on your left and the other one on your right. In other words, the mother, which every mother tries to do, right? Every mother here, don't, don't act like it. Every mother here wants their son to be up there, right? So she wasn't doing anything new. But she said to Jesus, let one of my sons be on your right and the other on your left. Power, authority. That's the mindset that she had. So... And then Jesus also watched his disciples fight among each other. Who, who is the greatest amongst us? You know, I'm the greatest. John says I'm not. 
You know, this one says, I am. No, they were fighting among themselves who would be the greatest, who would be actually the one to be the second in command to Jesus. And so after seeing all of this, Jesus got perturbed. He got troubled that his disciples may not have understood the mission that he has come to deliver to the world. And so he summoned all of them and said, come, folks, yeah, let, let's talk. You know, let's talk. That's why he, he wanted them to get away from the, from the crowds and go to a, a secluded place. Even though the crowd was still following them, he took them aside and said, who do people say that I am? Who am I to people? What do you hear? In other words, what do you hear in the streets about me? And then the disciples began to give their personal understanding of Jesus. The first say, oh, some of them say you are John the Baptist. Who is John the Baptist again? John the Baptist was the one who prepared, who baptized people so that they can prepare others for the Lord. Is that a wrong answer? No. But is that a complete answer? No. No. Others say you are who? You are Elijah. Who is Elijah? The miracle worker, the prophet of God. The one who has so much connection with God that he can call down rain. He can call down fire from heaven. So was that a wrong answer? No. Was that a complete answer about who Jesus is? No. Others say you are who? Jeremiah, the one who speaks with tenacity, with passion. Jeremiah who can look the king in the eye and say, you better stop, otherwise God will destroy you. The one who rains fire and brimstone with the word of the Lord. Was that wrong? No. After all, Jesus condemned the Pharisees. and He said to them, woe to you, scribes. Woe to you, Pharisees. So was Jesus... You know, did he resemble Jeremiah? Yes. But was that all he is? No. Others say you are a prophet. But Jesus was not satisfied with this answer. These answers that the disciples gave were not satisfactory to Jesus. Because if Jesus were to only be the one who prepares the way, what if he stops preparing the way? What happens? In other words, who is Jesus to you? If Jesus is only the one that prepares the way, when he stops preparing the way for you, will you continue to follow him? If Jesus were to only be a miracle walker who can call down fire and rain, in other words, bring down blessings for you, if that's all Jesus were to be to you, when your blessings run out, like the jar, when you no longer see the hand of God in your life, what happens? You fall away. If Jesus were to be like Jeremiah, the one who speaks truth to power, who challenges authority, when his voice is no longer strong enough to speak in your heart, will he still be the Christ? That's the reason why Jesus was not satisfied with all of these answers that were given. Yes, John the Baptist, he resembled John. After all, that was his cousin. Yes, he, re he resembles Elijah. After all, during the transfiguration, he was hanging out with Elijah. Yes, Jesus resembles Jeremiah. After all, he challenged authority. In fact, they called him the prophet of doom because he told them, destroy this temple and in three days I will rebuild it. That's how Jeremiah speaks. So Jesus resembled all of these qualities. But he was not satisfied with the answer until he personalized it and said to them, yes, that's what people are saying about me. Now you, yes, you, yes, you, who do you say that I am? You know, when somebody looks you in the eye and say, who am I to you? 
They're telling you, no, I don't want you to sugarcoat nothing. You know, just tell me. Who am I to you? And in every relationship, we must begin to ask each other that fundamental question. Whether it's a relationship between a father and a son or a daughter, a mother and a son or daughter, whether it's a relationship between friends, a relationship between couple, whether it's a relationship between the clergy, a relationship between parishioners, we must begin to ask ourselves, who is Christ to me? Because until you know who Christ is for you, you will not understand the meaning of his coming to die for us. So after he asked the question, Simon Peter, who had been quiet, you know, Simon Peter doesn't stay quiet. Simon was quiet all this while. He was praying in his heart. Simon Peter was reflecting in his heart. And because he gave God an opportunity, God now put words in his mouth. And Simon said, I, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Somebody say amen. amen. Because that's who Jesus is. He's not just a miracle worker. Because when we don't have miracles, we tend to leave the church. He's not just a promise keeper. Because when we don't have the promise fulfilled in our lives, we get discouraged. But Jesus is who? He is the Christ. Christos. He means he is the Savior. The Anointed One. Remember Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to do what? To bring glad tidings to the poor. To raise up those who are fallen. To give life. To go to prison and unlock the gates. Jesus is saying to us, I am the Christ. That's who I want to be to you. The one that will give you the keys so that you can unlock the good in others. You can bring out the good in others. That's who Jesus is. And because Simon Peter allowed God to use him, somebody say, God, use me. Amen. Mm, I didn't hear that. Because Simon Peter allowed God to use him, somebody say, God, please use me. Right? Simon allowed God to use him. And he spoke the words that God wanted him and has put in his heart. Jesus now said to him, You are Peter. His name was not Peter. His name was what? Simon. So Jesus had to run to the DMV and change his name from Simon to Peter. And then Jesus says, from now on, this is legit. You are Peter. What does Peter mean? Rock. Save us. You are Peter. And upon you, upon you, this rock, I will build my church. I will build my church. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Oh, do you remember what happened to, uh, to the first reading, El Eliakim? What did Jesus says I will give to you? I will give you the keys to the son, the house of the son of David. That's earthly keys, actually. But here, Jesus now said to Peter, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. That tells us that if you confess Jesus, if you truly know who Jesus is in your life, if you confess him as your Lord and personal Savior, that's the word that every Christian knows, Jesus, your Lord and personal Savior, if you confess him as the anointed one, the Christ, you will receive a key to the kingdom of heaven. That's the assurance. That's the blessed assurance. And then when you get the keys, not just to get the keys and put it in the pocket, right? He says, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. I.e., God said to Eliakim, I will place the keys of the house of David on your shoulder, Eliakim. Whatever you open, no one shall shut. Amen. And Jesus says, whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. When you shut, no one can open. 
That's, that, that's why we go to church, folks. That's why we have Jesus close to us so that we can receive the keys that will unlock the goodness of others. So the question for us today is, what kind of a leader do you want to be? They have shown us there are two kinds of leaders, right? The Shebnatic leaders or the Petratic leaders. Let me forget the grammar. The leaders who are like Shebna and the leaders who will be like Simon Peter. Uh, what did we remember Simon Peter for? Simon gave his life. And he was crucified. As a matter of fact, on the day he was to cruci be crucified in Rome, Simon said, oh no, I'm not worthy to be crucified like my Savior, like my Lord. Turn me upside down. Humility. Remember the ingredients? You need that in integrity, fairness, honesty. That's what every leader needs. And that's what every leader should have. And so my sisters today, my brothers, what kind of a leader do you want to be? The one who will unlock the goodness in others or the one who will bind others and subject them to poverty and hatred? You know, I talked about Saddam Hussein in Africa. But sure, sure, America do look close to Saddam Hussein. I don't care who's listening. The, the most you can do is take me out of St. Luke. America sure do look close. We do have something close to Saddam Hussein. Someone who wants to be in Rush, uh, Mount Rushmore. Someone who wants his signature on the check that you paid for through your suffering and your life. Someone who wants to put their signature and their name on a wall that Mexico is not paying for. That you are paying for. Yes, you. You are paying for the, you are paying for the wall. And you will continue to pay for the wall. We have to learn from others. Because that's what insanity is, right? Doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. America, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. We must be careful. Lest God will say to us, America, I will thrust you from your height and your office. I will pull you down from every position you think you are. On that day, I will hand the keys to someone else. If you don't use the power that God has given to you wisely, you know, the God will serve is not going to allow you to keep doing the same thing over and over. He's going to take that power away from us. Whether you are a priest, you are a bishop, or you are the successor of Simon Peter, the Pope, you must use your authority and the power, the keys that you have. You must use it to unlock justice for others. You must use your key to unlock peace. You must use your key to unlock goodness in others. Not to keep building legacies for yourself. You know one thing that is funny? Nobody remembers who Shebna is. The only reason why we remember him today is because of the shame that we read from Isaiah chapter 22. That's what will happen to any leader that focuses on themselves. Their personal aggrandizement. At the end of time, nobody will remember your name. But if you do good, if you make genuine impact in people's life, doesn't matter what you do. They will remember your name forever. When they think about you, they will think and, and, and pray like Simon Peter, uh, uh, who will scream and shout about Jesus, oh, don't crucify me like my master. When they think about you, they will rejoice and they will be glad like St. Paul, who will say, 
to all those who have done good to him, men and women, young and old, those who have given him a cup of water, uh, uh, five dollars, two dollars here and there, Paul will say to all of them, I thank my God each time I think of you. And when I pray for you, I pray with joy. I thank my God. I thank my God each time I think of you. And when I pray for you, I pray with joy. See, see, if you use the keys that you have, use it well. People will pray for you with joy. They will think about you. None of us remember Shebna. The Jewish people could care less about who Shebna is, even though he built himself, for himself, a monument on top of the mountain. Go over there. That monument has been destroyed and all his legacy has been wiped away. So, our legacy must not be built on physical structure. Jesus will tell us, you know, store for yourselves treasures in heaven where torment cannot destroy, moth cannot destroy. Store for yourselves treasure in heaven because that's the legacy that endures forever. Whatever good you do to one of these least ones, you may think it's insignificant, but every time they remember you, they will pray with joy. That's why Jesus is asking us, what do you want to do with the power and the authority you have? What are you doing with the keys that you have? Are you using it to unlock goodness for others or are you using it to suck the life of others? Just like some people constantly, everything they do, every decision they make, suck the life off of others. Are you operating like Shebna or do you want to operate like Simon Peter who will sacrifice himself and give himself for the gospel of Jesus? because he knew that Jesus was indeed the Christ, the son of the living God. Do good so that you will not only be remembered by people you know, you will be remembered for generations to come. That's the purpose of the keys that you have. And oh, don't tell me you don't have a key, for you do have the keys. You have the power, you have the authority. Do good and hear people say to you, mm, each time I think of you, yes, when I, when I, when I pray for you, yes, I want to pray with joy. That's why I say, I thank my God each time. I think of you and when I pray for you oh, and when I pray for you oh Lord and when I pray for you I pray with joy
us pray with joy as we profess our faith in Christ, God, our Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, let us with confidence ask the Lord Jesus Christ to reveal to us indeed that he is the true Christ, the son of the living God, so that our actions, our decisions may lead us to unlock the burdens that others have incurred. Let us now pray with faith. And our response is Christ, our Savior, Hear our prayers. Christ, Christ our Savior, hear our prayers. We pray for our church that it may be a living and true reflection of the light of Christ, a beacon of goodness to the world and a welcoming refuge for the poor, the hungry, and those who seek to be comforted. We pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ our, our Savior, Savior, hear our, our prayers. prayers. We pray for Pope Francis, the successor of Peter as the rock in our church, and pray that the Lord give him the strength and courage to continue his work for church reform. We pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ our, our Savior, Savior Hear our, our prayers. prayers. We pray for all those in our church, men and women, ordained and lay, who have been called to the role of shepherd, that they may follow closely the example of Christ and bear witness to his goodness. We pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ our, our Savior, Savior, hear our, our prayers. prayers. We pray for the many who have been alienated from our church through the misdeeds of those whose actions did not reflect the goodness, care, and love of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ our, our Savior, Savior, hear our prayers. We pray for parents, teachers, and all those who are currently preparing a safe return of our children to their schools. We pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ our, our Savior, Savior, hear our, our prayers. prayers. We bow our heads and remember in silence our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. 
Christ, Christ our Savior, hear our prayers. We pray in a special way for our brother, Loki Piawi, who is in the hospital at this moment. We pray that God's healing hands uh, will be better to him. We pray also for a happy married life for Parfait and Prisca and their children and their family. We pray that God will continue to shepherd them and grant them the grace to live and to walk as witnesses to the gospel. Let us pray. God, our Father, you have given us the grace to know you as our Lord and Savior. You have allowed us to confess you as the Christ, you who are the Son of the living God. May we share that same conviction in our daily lives, in our interactions with others, so that when we do use the keys and the powers and the authorities that you have given us in our homes, in our workplace, in our neighborhood, in our communities, with our friends, when we use the keys that you have given us, we may only unlock the goodness that dwells in others. For we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, you who live and reign with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus name on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within a veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath, His covenant, His blood support me in overwhelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, He then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found.
the Lord. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gain for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endures his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed the holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your Blessed Apostle, St. Luke, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ for the kingdom the power and the glory Lord Jesus Christ, who said to you, Apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us bow to each other as a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. of what they think you're like but I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased that I'm never alone you're good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and i'm loved by you it's who i am it's who i am it's who i am i've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like but i've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased that i'm never alone your good good father it's who you are it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, 
It's who I am. I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what I need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. Now I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. Yeah. 
loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. And you're perfect in all your The earth is replete with the fruits of your work, O oh Lord. You bring forth bread from the earth and wine to cheer. Let us pray. Complete within us, O oh Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just please be seated for a few minutes. Before we invite the couple who um, wedded yesterday for their altar, I, I just have a few I continue to encourage all of us, for those who have not signed up uh, for their census, now we hear that rather than October, the census may be over by September because it was not adequate funded. So please, this is August. August is almost over. Please, please, especially if you live in the District of Columbia, we are not getting our fair share from the federal government. We are not. That's why our schools are in trouble. We're not getting enough funds for our kids, for our seniors. So please, especially if you live in the District of Columbia, we are begging you to please fill out your census form by this weekend and send it in. Amen. I will keep reminding us, they don't pay me a dime. They are not the sponsors of this mass, right? They don't sponsor this mass. I, you know, the only thing I gain from it is I live here. I've lived here for over seven years. I know the pain. So please, if you live in the District of Columbia, everyone in your house, they don't have to be citizens. As long as they live here, they, res they are legally residing here or even illegally residing here. No matter, no questions asked, no judgment. Please. Fill out the forms and Amen. Amen. We congratulate and wish uh, these couples who are celebrating their anniversary this weekend, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Frank and Janice Williams, uh, also Mr. and Mrs. Abu, Abu Senior and Colette Manser, as well as Mr. and Mrs. Sylvester and Evelyn Moday uh, celebrate anniversary. So please give them a call. Some of them were at the earlier mass. I wish them well. Also, uh, those who are celebrating their birthdays, out to Kathy Harrison-Duga, uh, Barbara Esteline, Kenneth Brisbane, Keith Qualls, Marvin Manasseh, and Kamisha Davis, and Akia T. Scott Terrell, Chidozie Onya. Layla Neal and Margaret Darlington. So wish anybody here? No. So wish them a happy birthday. Amen. Amen. Just one, one more announcement. Um, and it's simply this, and I'm going to keep it very short. Um, our parish is doing well. Our parish is actually doing well. But we are doing well financially on the back and the shoulders of only 12% of our parishioners. Let me repeat that. Only 12% of our parishioners are actually carrying this parish financially. 
And you know, when you give 12 persons something that is meant for over 500 persons, what happens? It becomes a huge task and a burden on them. And I thank all of those people. Many of you, you, are, you know, I, I've stayed in this parish for over seven years. That was not the deal. The deal, I can, the, my appointment letter says one year. But because of your love, the love I have for this parish, I've turned down so many other things just to be here for over seven years. Because I know that this is a parish that is filled with love and a parish that is willing to continue to grow. And I want to be part of it. As long as they want me to be part of it. But we cannot sustain ourselves. We cannot sustain this parish on the shoulders of only 12% of our parishioners. Only 12% actually give Can you imagine if those 12% are giving what they are giving now and then others contribute at least five, ten dollars a week? You know where we will be? We'll be in a very, very good place. If we can assist that those 12% who are carrying this five hundred dollars, some of them, two hundred, three hundred, every week, some a thousand dollars, just to keep us going. It's not uh, billionaires and millionaires because they know the needs. They see the needs. And so I am asking all of us here to, to show some sign, and especially all those who are watching, because we have hundreds of people watching us live. Just if we can come together and do our path so that our parish will not struggle financially. In the archdiocese, over 30 some people may be let go because they can't afford it. And so the Archdiocese is asking us, pastors, to cut down on almost everything. Cut down on music, cut down on buying books, and, you know. But we're still trying to do what we can because we know that God has been good to us. Amen? Amen. So I, I, I just want to... Now is the time I'm asking all of us to ask each other. So it's not always the pastor. You know how I hate to talk about money. For the past how many weeks have you heard me mention money? Not because we don't need it, but I know we are going through a lot. I hear you. I, I talk with so many of you during the week. I see your pain. I feel your pain. Even we have had to help some of us from the little we have so that we can keep some of our parishioners going. So I know there is struggle. But let us now talk to each other so that the burden doesn't rest on only 12% of our parishioners. And I pray God will uh, keep us going. But like they say, heaven helps those who help themselves. So heaven is going to help us. The hand of God is already on us. Amen? Amen. We, we have done things that we never thought we could be able to do. God has been very good to us, but he's asking us to ask each other. Are you part of the 12%? That's the fundamental question. Are you part of those sustaining the parish? Are you part of those sustaining our parish? That's God calling you and telling you to be part of the 12%. See, that's God asking you. God is sending that. That's a, he sent the test. You didn't get it, so he's now calling you live. You know, be part of the 12%. So that by this time next week, instead of 12%, we may go to 22%. And maybe in a month time, we may go to 30% and 40 And hopefully, now I'm not talking about those who don't have any source of income. That's not what I'm talking about. We know ourselves. Those who, who can afford a cup of coffee every day. Those who can afford McDonald's every day. Those who can afford, you know, something that may not be so necessary every day. We're asking if we can channel some of those funds so that we can sustain this parish. We can sustain the parish in such a way that you will have a place where our kids can be baptized. When we lose relatives, they can have a funeral here. Or when we have beautiful celebration like the wedding that we had yesterday, you can have a place called your own. This parish is yours. And on that joyful note, Marvin plays something for us as we welcome the couple who have just recently uh, wedded yesterday as we uh, invite them forward so that we can pray for them. All of us are going to stretch our hands and pray for them. 
and their family and ask God to sustain them. They are coming with their sponsors, the witnesses to the wedding. hands as we pray. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Lord, you have given this couple an opportunity to bring their marriage to your altar in holy matrimony to celebrate the goodness and love that you have given us. Lord, you commanded us that a man shall leave his family and be joined to a woman and both shall no longer be two but one. And so Lord, we ask that you make them one. Bless their family, strengthen them with love, hope, and peace. Give all of us the grace to continue to share in their joy so that they may become witnesses to the gospel, to the face of the earth. May Almighty God bless you and keep you one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. to guide them to the world. God bless you all. Sing. did we learn today that God our Father has given all of us a key an authority power but we have to be like Simon Peter who used his power for the good of proclaiming the gospel and for the people placed under his care let us not be like Shebna who will lord it over to others who will use the resources that God has given us to build for ourselves earthly treasures that will not last. But rather, let us build on treasures in heaven that no one can tear down. So that at the end of our lives, our legacy, the good things that we have done, the people we have helped, the joy that we have put in the faces and the hearts of people will be a testimony about for our lives. The Lord be with you. Your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen. May God be gracious to you and continue to show you his mercies. Amen. Amen. May the Lord God who has given us the keys of life May he lead us to use that power, that keys, that authority to unlock the goods in others. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless and keep us and protect all of the teachers and students, especially those returning to school. And may he give us joy and keep us safe, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, proclaiming the gospel by your life. Thanks. Have a blessed day and God be with you.
that again. Come on. God Almighty. God Almighty. Lord of glory. You have called me. 